Hey guys, welcome to another amazing episode of talking about kayaks with Alex. Today, I have a really good one. We're gonna be talking about the not so nice things about kayak fishing. Five things you're probably gonna regret when it comes to kayak fishing. One of the crazy things that you're gonna realize once you get into the kayak fishing sport is that you spend a lot of time with your hands busy, either with just a paddle or if you have a PDL kayak, just having your hands on the rudder at all time instead of actually fishing, which is exactly what you wanna do. Now, the solution is to get an expensive GPS trolling motor with a remote control. But you know those things cost a lot of money, don't they? $1,600, maybe more. Some of the guys that will fish in freshwater, they have the option of getting a cheaper option that costs less because of their freshwater motors. But for us that fish a lot of salt water or even fresh water guys that like to go out there and fish salt water once once in a while they may want to go for the salt water version which is more expensive but here's where out of boat comes in and really takes the cake out of boat is a little hack that will make dumb 12 volt trolling motor super smart but it's not just that it makes it super smart it makes it smarter than those trolling motors that i just went over why because it comes with an app that you could do routes on it and retrace it. They're always updating the app, adding fishers, listening to anglers, and they use that feedback to create more better fishers to make our fishing better. Auto Boat also has a remote and you could have many remotes, not just one, it's not expensive. And the cool part is that it's a separate system. For example, you get your inexpensive 200 or $150 trolley motor of Amazon, 12 volt, and you add auto boat to it and you make it a smart combo. And what happens if your $150 motor breaks? Well, you easily just go and buy a new one instead of having to spend $1,700 on the whole setup. That happened to me, guys. I had a fancy NK unit that broke. I had to go and buy a fancy XI3 unit, and you guys know how I feel about that one. If I had an auto boat, I would have just purchased another $200 dumb motor and be happy. Unfortunately for me, I got auto boat after all that happened. But now, I'm set. And you could be set as well. Just use coupon code alias FOLGATA, and it's gonna save you 5% on your order of auto boat of TV Nation. Now, let's get to number two. Number two, I did a whole video about it and you could check it out, it's in the channel and I'm talking about when nature calls, right? When you're in the middle of a very public area on your kayak and you're fishing and you have to go and do number two. What the heck do you do? Well, something I didn't say in that video that Rod Really Fishing, my friend, said is that he was giving a tip of taking a large pouch, I forget the name exactly, Something that you, you, that you put on when it's raining. I, fr I can't think of what it's called right now. Maybe you can help me. But anyways, you, you cover yourself entirely like it's rainy and then you could do your business, right? And then just put it on a bag and dispose of it later. So that's not a bad idea. It's actually an excellent idea. When you are in a little tiny kayak, even though there are people around you, they won't be able to see clearly what you're doing. And if you cover it, they're gonna not see anything. And I like, the last thing they're gonna expect or think that you're doing is that you're actually pooping, but if that's the case, who cares, right? You know? <laughs> so yeah, nature's gonna call you at the moment that is not the best. So that's why you gotta prepare for it. I, I went over a bunch of things that I do myself to get over that problem. For that, just go watch that video. I really don't want this video to turn into that. Look at me, I don't know if you can see me, but right now I'm sweating. Like I was losing energy talking to you guys and I realized it was because I was in the sun and I was losing fluids and stuff it's a real thing like it's right now 232 222 in Florida it's hot it's almost no wind no breath you know so <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is that you need to make sure you're hydrated when you're out there doing your thing let me tell you this little story I was last year June I went fishing in the Keys and um, I was trying to do a review of a rod that I never did. Uh, I didn't. I caught a fish that day, but late in the day, I never did the video. And after I was being 
there for a while fishing, casting, I jump on my little boat from one side to the other. And I, in, on the middle of the jump, I felt like fainting. And I'm like, two things hit my head. I'm like, what has happened? Am I getting a stroke? And the other thing was like, good thing I have a PFD. So if I do fall in the water, it's gonna keep my head above the water and I, I should be fine. Somebody should find me, hopefully. But then what I realized was is that Wow, hey, I was like on a, I was on and the GoPro stopped recording because the battery ran out so I had to go upstairs and update it. So I'm using this phone to finish my thought. So what I realized was that even though I was drinking a lot of water, I wasn't retaining any important stuff. I didn't, I wasn't retaining electrolytes and I wasn't replenishing it. And that's why I was getting dehydrated because even though I would just drink water, it would just, I would sweat it right away right it's it's a bad deal how you fix this is i mean uh, beware of yourself see if you're feeling weak take a break go under a bridge or something just take a breather and of course take a lot of sport drinks with you that have a lot of electrolytes so instead of just drinking water you drink that and you're going to replenish your soul right and you're not going to become um statistics it's very important hydration is very important the other thing is that you do need to dress accordingly if you're going to be there in the middle of the sun you need to be using clothing that was designed to protect you not only from the sun but also from pretty much losing all your body fluids right and wear gloves wear a nice clothing designed for that hat and put some some screen on your face too because you know you don't want to die of cancer either so there are there's a lot of things that you can do to protect yourself and don't be like me where i just go i mean it's too late to put some screen or ah, who cares i left my gloves at home big deal don't don't be like me actually take time to prepare yourself and protect yourself when you go out there fishing so you could go way you could have way more trips because if you live longer you're gonna have way more trips fishing so you know take your time protect yourself Nothing to do with this video, but I just had a comment saying, a guy saying that no canoes are too narrow. Like the space here is too narrow, right? And I told him, well, just put your feet right here on the guns. And he's still saying that it's too narrow. Like, I don't know what the heck he's talking about because this kayak is one of the widest kayaks there is. And if you compare that to over here, something like the Ascent 133X is even narrower. The next regret, yeah. You're gonna know what I'm talking about when it happens to you. It probably happens already, but you know. What I'm talking about is bugs. Sometimes we go fishing in winter and it's nice and there's little bugs and you don't feel anything. But then you go to somewhere in Florida, right? Let's, let's call it, well, pick any place in Florida. But let's talk about Flamingo. You go there around, right now and as soon as you get out of the truck and you start setting up you just feel like a storm of little things just killing you eating you alive yeah that will happen totally what would i recommend in this case since you don't want to spend a lot of time there setting up setting up is to be ready like start setting up your kayak if you have a little trailer away from the ramp just like a boat and just bring it to the ramp launch it like a boat run to your car park come back and just get out of there right just do it in two minutes if you have a trailer you could do that if you don't have a trailer where you have to bring your kayak down by hand and then start putting stuff on it your fish finders your your tackle boxes everything what i would say is to keep it simple you know like if you're gonna go to a place where you know there's gonna be a lot of bugs just take exactly what you need like drop everything on, on your black pack and your rod just place them get on the kayak and leave and once you are in open water and the bugs are not around take a few minutes to set up other than that is to make sure you dress up properly uh, wear long sleeve cover or gloves cover yourself completely and also wear some bug spray and then you you have a higher chance of fighting these bugs i mean there's really nothing else <laughs> that you can do right <laughs> unless you inject yourself with something, which you shouldn't, but uh, do people do that? I don't know, comment below. It is actually nice here. I really don't want to change 
places for the angles so I'm gonna talk about the last one right here and is that kayak fishing is a money pig pig no <laughs> how do you say that money pit like a pit like a black pit a giant hole that you never see the bottom and it doesn't matter how much you throw at it you're never gonna fill it up I actually did a video about kayak fishing it never ends it's one of my best videos ever I'm gonna link it here I think nobody saw it like I mean it has like 7,000 views but not a lot of more people saw it because it ended on a sour note I'm thinking of redoing that video and putting a positive spin on it because that's life right you, you it never ends but you gotta keep going and um, kayak fishing is no different than anything else uh, you start with a little kayak two hundred dollars kayak and then there's something you don't like about it that you could be that you could fix it with a one thousand dollar kayak so you go do that but then when you buy the one thousand dollar kayak you realize that maybe you want pedals because you want to exercise and, and then when you get the pedals you wanna uh, you go man I'm always working out and it's still not fully hands free so you add auto boat which you should by the way use coupon code alias for data save you five percent and then you're happier but then uh, your rod breaks and you gotta buy a new one and it's like that right and then you have your fancy set up and everything is perfect and amazing and you're in love with it but then you go to YouTube and then it's me with a new video about a new kayak that just launched that has a rocket and then you go damn now I have to up my game again I need to get that rocket I love it I want to have it I want to know what it feels like and it's gonna be like that but what I say is don't focus so much on that you always want to be upgrading or downgrading or you always want to be changing things for whatever reason focus on the time you spend with those things right what those things enable enable you to do uh, for me sometimes I have as much fun with a $200 paddle kayak that I do with a $5,000 kayak right I, don't get me wrong you get me to choose and I have to choose a $5,000 kayak because it gives me more options of going out there fish different waters and things like that so you t should totally get something that is designed to do what you want to do but my point is enjoy the $200 kayak enjoy the $5,000 kayak don't think because you don't have the $5,000 kayak that somehow you're gonna be inferior and that you're not gonna be able to probably enjoy your time on the water. I know so many happy people out there. Like, let me tell you a little story. I went in the Keys years ago fishing. I took my fancy rods. I had like $2,000 worth of rods on, on the bridge. And I, I was there for hours and I, I don't think I caught anything. And there was, there was a guy next to me with a Cuban yo-yo, just hand lighting, right? Hand lighting, lightning. Yeah, just on lining, fishing, and he was pulling one fish after the other. His setup probably cost ten dollars, and he was catching so many fish. And me, with my fancy setup and knowledge, because I do know a lot about fishing, I was catching nothing. Who was having more fun, the guy with the ten dollars setup or me with thousand dollars? Well, I always have fun, so probably me. <laughs> but you get my point. Guys, I hope you like videos like this. I'm gonna be doing more because they're easy to do and also there are things that I really wanna talk to you guys about. And if you have any videos in this matter that you want me to do, comment below. I'm gonna be picking comments and turning them into videos. I already done a few recently, but I will be doing more. This, um, actually, it's a comment. <laughs> it's conversation from, not a YouTube comment, but this video idea came up from me talking with my friends about kayak fishing and things that they regret. So it's part of that whole thing. So I'm listening to the community and my friends about the things that are wrong that we experience with kayak fishing and how can we fix them, right? Because nothing is perfect later oh wait 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 before i say later i do have a second channel that i'm working on right now has close to 700 subscribers and i need it to be a thousand subscribers asap so i could put in their fresh brand new content about kayak reviews uh, so basically what it's gonna be is if i get a new kayak like the u10 and i make 10 videos about it flipping testing reviews all the kind of stuff motors instead of releasing 10 videos on my main channel i was just gonna release one video with all that into the new channel 
with chapters. So you watch the part you want and you're not asking about, hey, you just unbox this thing, where's the fishing? You know, like everything is in that video, you could just check the chapters. Uh, the reason why I can't do that on my main channel is simply because money, right? If I, if I just put one video on my main channel and it, pfft, nobody watches it for whatever reason, then I, I lose money. Like I basically spent two weeks working and I, I, I have nothing to show for. So my main channel is more of like a breathing, living thing that I have to keep an eye on. The second channel, we just drop the video there. And if it doesn't work well, I mean, it's, it's a second channel, right? Uh, this channel, you're gonna still see a lot of kind of videos. For example, videos like this one that you just watch if you're still watching. Well, you will be if you're listening to this, but probably a lot of people already left. I will not be putting this video on the new channel because it's a more of a experience video, a more like an adventure-like video, right? It's just me talking about the spirit, my experiences on the water. So it's not gonna go there. Only kind of reviews video is gonna go there. The name of the channel is gonna change, but the Twitter handle is not gonna change, which is alias Kaya Test. Everything is linked down below in the description or a comment. I'll see you in the next one.